Coming up next, this song was written to be part of a rock opera that a legendary guitarist wanted to make into a film. But he couldn't raise the capital for it or get it off the ground, so he just threw it on his band's next album, not really thinking about it. It became one of the most powerful rock anthems ever recorded. So powerful that the singer's iconic scream was so piercing on this song, when the band first heard him, they thought he had gotten into a fist fight with their engineer. It's a song, it's about a revolution. But unfortunately, life has now imitated art because the lesson in this song has still not been learned 50 years later. I'm telling you, we got to figure this out right now. Find out what I'm talking about. The song and the story is coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if, if a rock and roll song has ever changed the way that you look at the world or motivated you to do the impossible, you're gonna love this channel. This is where we break those songs down. We celebrate their joy, their power, their glory. We get the story straight from the artist. Make sure that you subscribe below right now. Click the bell so you never miss out on our daily content. And uh, take a second to look at our Patreon. We give you more content that helps us keep this channel alive. Pete Townsend, one of the elite members of the senior aristocracy of British rock. He's a fascinating music icon. I mean, his colorful career has revealed uh, multiple personality layers. He was an angry mod with art school arrogance. He was a benevolent disciple enlightened by mysticism on a quest to realize the absolute oneness of God. When he hit the stage, he unleashed a guitar-shattering fury, producing a sound that was so loud, so bombastic, it made the ears of his bandmates bleed. And then uh, mild-mannered Pete Townsend can segue into a soft-spoken conceptualist. composed three ambitious rock operas, Tommy, Quadrophenia, and the discontinued uh, Lifehouse. What Pete envisioned for Lifehouse uh, was a project that would become a film about a futuristic world where people are enslaved by the government. Does that sound familiar? But ultimately, it's saved by a massive rock concert. Lifehouse, however, uh, didn't get the financial support to be completed. So the Enterprise was scrapped in favor of putting the music Pete had written for the opera onto a new album for The Who. Uh, the inspired music intended for Lifehouse actually became Who's Next, the record that many regard as The Who's opus. I'm one of those people. Uh, the first track on Who's Next is the masterpiece, Bob O'Reilly. That was set to be the opening piece for Lifehouse. Now, the last track on Who's Next was another exceptional showpiece that was titled Won't Get Fooled Again. Don't get fooled again. And that was designed to be the exciting conclusion for Lifehouse. Now, Won't Get Fooled Again was constructed into a three-part storyline over an eight-minute and 36-second song. with each instrumental section uh, representing the thickening of the plot. The first part of Won't Get Fooled Again is, you know, the calm before the storm, uh, the bubbling of a revolution that intensifies with the evolution of a lyrical uprising. The overthrow of existing power is really symbolized and won't get fooled again by the permeating sounds of a cutting edge synthesizer. In fact, Pete programmed a mixture of human traits into a synthesizer and he used it as the grounding instrument throughout the song. Townsend had been reading in Ayat Khan's The Mysticism of Sound and Music. This addressed spiritual harmony and the universal chord. In Khan's teachings, when the universal chord sounded, harmony would be restored to humanity. To give Won't Get Fooled again a futuristic vibe and incorporate the, the gospel of Ayat Khan, 
Townsend used the emerging technology of synthesizers uh, to communicate the idea of spiritual harmony to a mass audience. It was the first time that Townsend or The Who used a synthesizer on their published work. Pete met with uh, professionals at the BBC Radiophonic Workshop to capture ideas to inject human personality within his music. In fact, he interviewed several people in a way that a general practitioner would pose questions uh, to a new patient. And he proceeded to capture uh, their heartbeat, uh, brain waves, and uh, astrological chart, converting that data into a series of audio pulses. Isn't that interesting? When Pete Townsend created the demo for Won't Get Fooled Again, he actually uh, linked a lower organ into an EMS VCS3 filter that played back the audio pulses that he procured from his experiment. The demo version of Won't Get Fooled Again, that was recorded at a slower tempo than the final version by The Who. Townsend completed the rough draft by overdubbing uh, drums, bass, electric guitar, vocals, and hand claps. He did all this himself. We don't get fooled again. The Who's first stab at recording the song was at the record plant in New York City. I believe that was in March 1971. Who manager Kit Lambert had recommended the studio to the group which led to his uh, producer credit, though the de facto work was done by Felix Papillardi. That take featured Papillardi's mountain cohort, uh, Leslie West, on lead guitar, the, the late great Leslie West. I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. The glasses I'm wearing right now, uh, when you get your eyewear at zenny.com, you're never going to have to deal with things like foggy lenses or glare with Zenny's advanced two-in-one anti-fog and anti-reflective coating. It's really amazing. If you go to zenny.com, you can design your own pair today and add those features. Glenn Johns was invited to help with production and he decided to reuse the synthesized organ track from Townsend's original demo as the re-recording of the part in New York was believed to be vastly inferior to the original. Now, Townsend played a 59 Gretsch 6120 Chet Atkins hollow body guitar fed through an Edwards volume pedal to a Fender Bandmaster amp. Now, all of this gear was a gift from the great Joe Walsh. This is while the guys were in New York and actually that guitar amp combo, as many of you know, became Pete's main electric guitar recording setup for subsequent albums. Although intended as a demo recording, the end result sounded so good to the band and to John's that they decided to use it as the final version. When Pete wrote Won't Get Fooled Again, he was actually living on Eel Pie Island in Richmond, London. At the time, uh, there was a, an active hippie commune on Eel Pie Island, taking refuge inside an old hotel. Pete actually felt uh, a kinship with the members of the commune because they could relate to him as a central figure for a group, and he had an appreciation for their uh, united spirituality. The commune was a source of inspiration for Won't Get Fooled Again, as was the infamous Woodstock Festival in 1969, where the Who performed as one of the headliners. For most artists that played Woodstock, the sea of humanity inspired songs of love and peace, of course, but Townsend reacted very differently to the scene. The Who were on the bill for, the, I believe, the second day of Woodstock, yeah. And uh, because of the torrential rain and constant production issues, the band actually didn't go on stage until 5 a.m. It's very hard to believe. During the Who's set, activist Abby Hoffman jumped on stage and he grabbed the microphone from Roger Daltrey and he started to preach uh, to the audience to protest the imprisonment of jazz and poet and political extremist John Sinclair. The polish while John Sinclair rots in prison. The story goes that Townsend was really incensed by Hoffman's antics, and he hit him with his guitar. Oh, I, oh, 
He told him to get off of his stage. Townsend and the band uh, really didn't want any part of Hoffman's crusade. Now, many years later, Townsend expressed uh, regret to a reporter for Cream Magazine for you know, kicking Hoffman off the stage. He stated that if he had it to do over again, he would have allowed Hoffman to state his piece. After getting multiple convictions for possession of marijuana, John Sinclair was sentenced uh, to 10 years in prison in 1969 when he offered two joints to an undercover female narcotics officer. Uh, Hoffman, among many others, very furious over the severity of uh, Sinclair's sentence, which prompted his storming of the stage at Woodstock, uh, the protest. Now, a few years later, John Lennon also protested against the harshness of Sinclair's punishment. Hard to believe that uh, that sentence is so cruel for that offense. Now, John Lennon performed a song that he wrote entitled after Sinclair on television with lyrics like, uh, they gave him 10 for two, what else can the bastards do? And he recorded it for his album sometime in New York City. Though by the time uh, the LP was out, Sinclair had actually been released. John Sinclair in the step of now in 1969, Townsend was very cynical about the movement that drew hundreds of thousands of people to Woodstock in the first place. Uh, back then, he wanted to shake the attendees that thought that the festival was gonna somehow make the world a better place and make them realize that really nothing was going to change. That cynicism fueled the moral to the narrative of Won't Get Fooled Again. Just the same if history ain't changed. Very much so. A social revolution was pointless because anyone who takes over is destined to abuse their power and fall prey to corruption. Sadly, it is the nature of almost all men. As soon as they get a little bit of power, they immediately begin to abuse their authority and force their will and, and control upon other people. In the, face, In the long run, revolutions only amount to people getting hurt. At least this is what Pete Townsend believed. Won't Get Fooled Again is an anti-establishment anthem though. Uh, it roars with thunder of defiance, expressing strong lyrics like, we'll be fighting in the streets with our children at our feet. However, it was very important to towns in distress that revolting against the men who spurred us on could have unpredictable consequences. Townsend summed up his concern about an uprising with this bit of advice. He said, don't expect to see what you expect to see. Expect nothing and you might gain everything. We don't get fooled again. Roger Daltrey's ferocious scream became an unintentional focal point of Won't Get Fooled Again. And it wasn't planned. It was actually just something that Roger instinctively did in the studio, and it signaled that the revolution of the second part of Won't Get Fooled Again had just begun. Yeah! The second Daltrey scream on the full album version of Won't Get Fooled Again, uh, that's really the exclamation point for the third and final act of the song with the frustrating realization that the revolution was all for naught. The new regime is no better than the old regime. How many times have we learned that lesson? When he says, I'll tip my hat to the new constitution, take a bow for the new revolution. New constitution, take a bow for the new revolution. He acknowledges the fruits born from the last revolution, but will continue to battle for something better. When he sings smile and grin at the change all around, Pick up my guitar and play. Then I'll get on my knees and pray. We don't get fooled again. Don't get fooled again. That's for all of us as citizens who try with all of our might to fight the man, to fight the establishment, who, of course, make false promises. We hope and pray that we won't get fooled again. Truly a song for the times.
Daltrey belts out just a venomous scream heard around the world, then sarcastically invites you to meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Meet the new boss, same as the It's like German philosopher Friedrich Hegel said, the only thing we learn from history is that we learn nothing from history. Now, the screams on Won't Get Fooled Again are considered to be among the most powerful moments in recorded history of the entire rock era. Certainly on the top of the highlight reel from Roger Daltrey, one of rock's greatest vocalists, greatest interpreters. And Daltrey's roaring outcries on Won't Get Fooled Again, they were so convincing, so shocking to the band who were actually eating lunch near the recording booth. They thought that Roger was brawling with Glenn Johns. Won't Get Fooled Again was superbly performed by the classic lineup for The Who. Ugh, just really one of the monster rock groups ever. Roger Daltrey on lead vocals, the great John Entwistle on bass, Keith Moon's doing the drums and percussion, and Pete Townsend on lead guitar, acoustic guitar, Lowry organ, and supporting vocals. Just an inspired anthem that has proven time and again in our world. As the lead single from Who's Next, uh, Won't Get Fooled Again was butchered to 3 minutes and 35 seconds. It was first released in the UK as a single in June of 71, uh, replaced Behind Blue Eyes, which the group felt didn't fit the Who's established musical style as the choice of single. Behind Blue Eyes it was released in July of 71 here in the U.S., backed with I Don't Even Know Myself. That was recorded at Eel Pie Studios in 1970 for a, a planned EP that never came out. I said I don't know myself. Won't Get Fooled Again, it reached number nine in the U.K. charts, went to uh, number seven in Canada, and it went to number 15 on the Billboard Hot 100 here. Uh, the PR material to launch the single showed an abandoned cover of Who's Next, featuring the always ready for a good time Keith Moon dressed in drag and flaunting a whip of all things. The song was first covered with Soul Flavor by LaBelle that was on their 1972 album uh, Moon Shadow. We won't get fooled again. We won't get fooled. Van Halen, the mighty Van Halen covered the song in 92 in concert. They rearranged the track uh, Eddie did so that the synthesizer part was played on the guitar. A live recording was released on Live Right Here Right Now and it made it to number one on the Billboard album Rocks chart. The psychic restlessness of Pete Townsend makes him absolutely one of the most compelling icons of the rock era. I mean, his windmill, a guitar assault inspired by his hero Keith Richards, is a rock and roll trademark for dynamic musicianship along with his floor slides and his manic twirling showmanship. He's also one of the most fascinating lyricists, you know, disregarding the, the boundaries of conventionalism and creating music that was always far ahead of its time. We don't get fooled again. The bookends of his aborted third rock opera, Bob O'Reilly and Won't Get Fooled Again, are the granite structuring. Who's next on the shortlist of the all-time greatest albums in the execution of Moon, Daltrey, and Entwistle to rescue Townsend's Lifehouse and turn it into an epic recording. It's just a remarkable demonstration of the highest order of artistic collaboration. Who's Next is one of those rock albums that just changed my life as a little kid. I was always curious and excited to discover more music. This album, especially this song and Bob O'Reilly, it was an aberration compared to the music that I was hearing to that point. It was like having a perfect uh, filet mignon with a, a juicy lobster tail after a childhood full of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I mean, I went from seeing the world in black and white to seeing it in full technicolor. This band shook me out of my doldrums and offered up full and unadulterated joy with the, the glorious sound of freedom. 
It was liberty in full stereo. It really is the new constitution. So I'll tell you what, we gotta wake up from our slumber, take our red vitamins, get on our knees and pray because we won't get fooled again. Never again. Leave us a comment about this life-changing song. What are your memories of the first time that you heard The Who? And uh, who's next for that matter? What are your experiences relating to it? What are some other songs that have changed your life that we ought to cover here? Let us know in the comments. Always love to see those. If you like this video, we do invite you to subscribe below and make sure to click the bell so you never miss out. Make sure to check us out on Patreon as well as our new merch that we always have up. Help us keep the music alive. It's paramount in the times that we live in. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. See you later.